Good morning, everybody. About 18 months ago, I was walking along the beach. I had my shades on, and I was looking like you do when you're wearing your shades. Try to let the people in the sunbeds not see that you're looking who's there. David Beckham wasn't there, Rihanna wasn't there, and Gary Lineker weren't there. Three of the regular visitors to Sandy Lane Beach in uh, Barbados. But somebody was there who I wasn't expecting. He said, hi, welcome to Barbados. You're new here. How long have you been here? Oh, we just got in yesterday. How long are you here for? 10 days. I thought I hadn't seen you before. It's a great island, but let me warn you, if you, uh, it's five o'clock in the evening, the sun is still hot. If you're not careful, you'll get sunburnt and I'd hate you to ruin your holiday. So, and if you carry on walking along that beach, you'll find that those leaves at the end of the beach, if they fall on your skin, the sap is acidic and it will give you a blister which will ruin your holiday. He was our man there in his rast raster cap and his uh, England t-shirt, typical street seller, beach seller, but didn't try and sell us one thing. So we parted company, next day he said, hi, hope you're having a great time. Did I warn you about those leaves? I said, yes. And then one of the girls made the mistake, said, what are you selling? Because he couldn't understand they weren't selling. He said, ha, ha, ha. He says, I'm not selling anything. People buy pineapples from me. I thought, interesting guy. I said, uh, big mistake. The next lady says, how much do these pineapples cost? Oh, he says, $200. I said, what? $200? What? $200 US dollars? He said, yeah. I said, what? Are they made of gold? He says, they're golden. They're delicious. They're a work of art. They're a real experience. I thought, this is interesting. I wasn't going to be buying a pineapple, let alone a pineapple for $200. So we parted company with a great laugh, hadn't tried to sell us a thing. Next day he bumps into us and one of my mates there says, what's your name? He said, my name's Original, rolling his R's. I'm the original pineapple man from Barbados. He's got his own YouTube channel, he's got his own Facebook channel. Go along and have a look. He said, I am famous in Barbados. And we just parted company laughing. And I just thought, this is interesting. I feel this guy is different, that I'm gonna learn something from him. And today, I want to talk to you about standing out from the crowd, like this man stood out on the beach in Barbados. There's certain things in life that are true. You, as a profession, are faced with so many regulations. The latest ones were these care certificates. I cannot believe the bureaucracy that you have to endure. And, you know, I just was in a home the other day, just seeing the piles of files that for each carer that you're having to go through. You've got all these costs being imposed on you with regulation. Now you're looking after the vulnerable, so I understand that. But you're, it's getting to the stage that you almost need to have a full-time administration person just to deal with your certification and your training, etc. So I'm not going to get political, but the point is you can't afford to do it unless you're charging enough. And what I'm finding is those people are trying to cut down, cut down, cut down, where they're not going about looking at their homes the right way. You can only cut your costs so far, but there is no limit in theory to how much you can increase your prices. But in order to increase your prices, you've got to look at yourselves the way other people look at you. So that's what I'm going to do today is just challenge you to look at yourselves the way other people look at you. I use a technique called the eyesore review. You see E-Y-E-S-A-W, but could easily be S-O-R-E. I go into a care home and we ask the team to wear the eyes, close their eyes and think of themselves as a prospective purchaser of a bed, a purchaser of a room for their auntie, for their mother, for their uncle. I say, what do you see? What do you think about? Before you even go into that home, what do you do? You look at the website. In your website, what 70% 70, 70 or more people go to the website these days for a telephone number. Is your telephone, I've been onto several care home sites recently, and it's a devil's own job to find your telephone number clearly exposed on that front page, preferably on the right hand, top right hand side. Very nice big pictures of a building, but the telephone number is not clearly defined. So let's say you, your, tele, your uh, website passes that test. They telephone you. Who is gonna answer that phone? Say it's today. You're here, are your team as good as you? Or is it going to be that miserable mackerel who's having a bad day, who picks up that phone and, and doesn't care who's on there, not realizing that this person could be with you for 10 years 
and is going to make a decision whether or not they're going to come to the home based on the way that phone has been answered. Because the number of times I phone up care homes and I think, well, I don't know who's answering that phone, but they don't seem at all to be interested. And weekends, of course, what do I find? Uh, we're on skeleton staff. So we don't have bother with receptionists. When is the most time we get visitors? Weekends. And yet, what do I do? I go to homes and I find there's no receptionist. So the first impressions that we're creating are not great. So I could go, we haven't got time for me to go through the whole rigmarole, but try it with your team and try this ISO test and just say, just go through every stage. Because I was, went, went to one home in Worthing and it was a great home and they wanted to be able to increase their profits. The whole drive was covered in weeds. And I thought, well, that's not very good because if they're caring and they're trying to tell me they're a quality thing, the least I want to do before I even get inside the door is to have the weeds cleared. So you can just go through and you'll see one thing after another. I was with one home in Wrexham and they identified that outside the front door was a whole pile of cigarette ends where the carers go, have a cigarette with their cigarette break and they just put it out at the end. They knew it was there, but they don't bother, they don't see it because they're the ones who are smoking and they've got used to it. But because they were looking at it from somebody else's eyes, they didn't see it. But the impact it makes on you as a prospect is quite devastating. Because it just says, these people don't care about the small things that matter. What am I gonna trust them with my relative? And so try, try this at home. So what I do is think about what are the first impressions? So I take the team through and look at your first impressions. Now the first impression is, say you pass all those tests and you actually get people to come in the door. How do you welcome your visitors? How do you make it great experience for your visitors to make a first impression that really matters? I was at a hotel in Borneo and I give you this as an example. I don't expect you to necessarily follow this, but just to challenge your thinking about what's possible. This is the Razaria Hotel in, Bor in Borneo, it's a five, five star hotel. And as soon as somebody um, spots a car coming down the drive, they pass a signal to their colleague up the stairs who goes along and boing, bangs the gong. That sets a whole chain of events in going. So her friend on the cymbals goes ding dong 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 dong. The porter hears ding dong 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 dong. Goes off, one porter goes off and gets a cold drink. Another porter goes off and gets a cold towel. Now, do you have a system that recognizes when you're gonna get a visitor. And what do you do to make them welcome? How easy would it be to give them a cold drink, let alone a warm drink, give them a choice? How easy would it be to look after their car? Whatever it is, there's so many things you can do just to make an impact right at the beginning before they've even seen your rooms, seen your carers, done anything. The first impressions, those small things that matter. I've got a client who calls them TNT, tiny noticeable things but they're explosive when they're tiny noticeable things that are great. Do you have any TNT in your business? Do your team know what you want to happen in your business, but they don't care because you haven't shared it, because you're only as good as the weakest member of your team. However much you want to do and be the best, your team don't understand that, because the culture in your home does not embrace this soft, fluffy stuff, the TNTs that really matter. So I encourage you to look at your system. So in this case, they, the porter comes along and the receptionist, I don't have to go to the receptionist. The receptionist greets me as I come up the stairs and I actually have to go along to these chairs. They come along and she kneels down beside me, takes down my details while the porter brings me the drink and another porter brings me the uh, um, cold towel. Then the receptionist walks me to my room. I go in my room and all men do, straight away we go to the loo. First thing I see, lovely fluffy towel and an orchid. What does that say to me? Quality, a fluffy towel and an orchid. How much does that cost? The number of homes I go into seeing towels that are just okay. In business, we have to give people choices. It costs so little to actually do it. We all focused on cutting, cutting costs, yet the little small things that cost so little, putting an orchid, dressing our room, preparing our room. I went round a nursing home group in North London last year. The owner went round and I said, right, we're doing an eyesore review. 
The, uh, the owner was horrified. He hadn't walked around and looked at it like that. We found in the room, empty room, that was there for the next uh, uh, resident to come in, was full of uh, spare wheelchairs. It, they hadn't even bothered to do it, yet I wasn't a prospect, but I could have been. It's so easy for your team to sabotage your best intents. The first impressions that you want to make to create the right impression to allow you to charge the right price to get the right profit to pay for all this bureaucracy that you're having to under endure at the moment. Enough of that politics. This same hotel um, left me a parcel after my first day. And I thought, that's great. I've only been here one day. Razaria Resort. I looked at it. It's my shirt that needed to be washed. I thought, well, that's really impressive. And I sort of thought about it with, with care homes. My father was in a care home. I was forever fighting um, to actually make, get him wearing his own clothes rather than somebody else's clothes. The owner was horrified. The team didn't really care it and think it mattered. They just wanted to get something that fitted him. It's so important, just these little small things. Things like clothes, TNTs, they really, really matter. If you are going to make the right impressions, you've got to focus on these small things that matter. It's common sense, I know. I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't happen to you. You are the people who care. You are the people who come to events like this to listen, to get ideas, to challenge yourself, to th do things differently. But I tell you, I go into some good care homes and I see these silly things that happen that sabotage the owner's attempts to be successful. The money you invest into care homes and yet your team sabotage because they don't realize how important it is. They're not doing it deliberately. They don't realize how important it is. So I ask you to think about your first impressions. If you've been to Barcelona, you, would, you go up to Las Ramblas, you would have seen this market. Just look at the trouble they take now, you've seen fruit stalls all around this country. Look at the trouble they take to uh, organize their fruit. And as soon as they sell one, they can then uh, replace it and make sure it looks better. Look at the sweet stall in the same market. Look at the eggs. They say, buy me, buy me. How much does it cost to take a little trouble to present what you do better? To make sure the weeds, to make sure there's no litter by your entrance, to make sure there's no stains on the carpet by your entrance to make sure there's no cobwebs in the corridor when your first prospect comes in. Because I'm always reminded of the Scandinavian Airlines guy who rescued, uh, about 20 years, rescued Scandinavian Airlines. Wrote, Jan Carlson wrote a book called Moments of Truth. We are facing moments of truth in the care professions every day. What he said was, if somebody comes into one of my planes, takes down the meal tray and sees a coffee stain, gosh, what does that say? about the quality of the engines. If I can't be bothered to clean my, the coffee stain off the tray in my, uh, on my meal tray, can I be bothered to clean my engines? Totally unrelated, but the TNTs that really matter. Do you make enough effort to make sure your first impressions, it costs so little to get your first impression. Using the Barcelona theme, look at the trouble the ice cream maker does. Gaudi, the famous architect, and they get their ice cream looking like Gaudi. So it just takes somebody a bit of trouble. So when they take a scoop out, they then go and put it right again. It's fantastic, the effort they make. And then you go to somewhere else. This one was in Iran. I like go around the world and I take pictures. But that's, you can see that could be in UK. That fruit stall in the UK. And then I bring to our building. We're so proud of our buildings. Are we congruent with the messages? We tell everybody how fantastic we are. This was a hotel. Brilliant, uh, brilliant hotel. Look at that beautiful reception. Nice, gleaming. Even had their own tissues. Unbelievable dreams. I went into the room and that's what I saw. The roof hanging off, pulled together, sockets hanging out. Now I know you can't have that in a care home. I'm using this as a story to engage. Are you congruent? Because so often you see nice things at the front of the house but you go into the rooms and they don't look as nice. Yet, when I look at what needs to be done to make it look better, it doesn't actually cost a lot. It's worth investing to make sure, because I say when this uh, owner, and I hope he's not in the audience, went round this uh, 100 bed care home in North London, he was horrified what his team um, had been putting into this uh, bedroom that was there for the next prospect to come and have a look at. And it's these little small things, in this case, ru a rusty rail where the towels, I've seen this in uh, care homes, rusty rails, where we have storage.
grimy taps where the cleaning hasn't, isn't good. I know it's none of your homes that you'll see that. I know you are more enlightened, but don't let it happen. Make sure your team are aware how important it is to get it right. So what else do you have to do to stand out from the crowd? This is a care home in uh, a Hindhead, just south of Guildford, called Huntington House. They're lucky, they're near the country, but they make the most of this thing. Well, so when we were talking about them, we said, right, let's see what we can do to make the most of the country. They've got lambs in, around the lawns because the residents are going out and they're looking out. So they make sure there's nice, they've got ponies just uh, around the edge. So when the residents are looking out, they make sure there's ponies there. So here's, the, here's one of the entrances. And you look at, uh, you look at the outlook here um, over on the trees. I'm trying to get them to take a, a copy of the silence of the birds whistling, putting that on the website. Sell the tranquility, because that really matters. So a video like this, you can't hear the, with all this noise, you can't hear the bird sound, but you've got this, you've got the sheep grazing there. What people are doing is buying the dreams and making sure mother is gonna have a lovely backcloth. Now, not everybody can have that, but what do you do to make the most to stand out from the crowd? Avnish Goyle, Hallmark Healthcare. His new home that was uh, released in um, Surrey last year, Lakeview Care Home. The cafe, it used to be fireplaces used to be the feature. Now he makes cafes where everybody can come in and just go and have a, help themselves a cup of coffee, visitors. That is a lovely feature to make an amazing first impression. The effort that is taken. Now Avnish has got three types of cost but he's taken the trouble to have some really high class costs, really high class sweets, as well as some more standard sweets, but it's all presented impeccably. And we, he makes sure that the team understand this. I've worked with Avenish for over 10 years now, and he makes sure his team understand. It is so easy to make the right first impression. I know it costs money, but even the cinema is inviting. Because when you're selling to, you're not selling to the resident, you're selling to the, pros, the, to the relative who's, who's going to be there. Another aspect is how easy do you make it for them to buy from you? How easy do you make it for them to say yes? I encourage you, like I do with all my clients, to give a total unconditional satisfaction guarantee. Try me before you buy. Come in, if you're not sure, come in and use my room for a week. It's gonna cost you nothing. If they're in and you're great, they're not gonna to want to leave. The research shows there's a slight 0.2% of people are of the sort that they're gonna try and abuse the hospitality. One of the easiest ways of actually converting a sale is making sure that you give a great guarantee. A great guarantee gives you a 60% more chance of converting a sale when they're comparing you to other homes. If they're gonna complain about you, you will end up refunding the money. So give it to them free if that's, if that's an issue. For one week, it's worth it. It's the best marketing you can do. I see so much money spent on marketing that it's a total waste of money. It pushes up the, polishes up the ego of the owners because they're the only people who look at it. Because nobody believes what you say about yourself. They only believe what other people say about yourself. We get onto our service. Of course, everybody's got fantastic service apart from the miserable mackerel who doesn't care. Three types of service, triple A service. There's awful, there's amazing, and there's all right. Which one does nobody ever talk about? All right. When was the last time you went into a new restaurant and said, I went to this new restaurant last night, the service was all right. If it was awful, you'll tell 20 people. If it's amazing, you'll tell 10 people. And then you have no marketing costs, because if you give amazing, suddenly your marketing costs are very low. So my challenge to you is what can you do that is amazing? So here's an example of a care home where they make sure their team are dressed up appropriately and uh, are looking. So depending on what the clientele are like, so milk, no sugar, they've created a food club. And what they found is where the residents were not eating properly, by giving little tidbits uh, half an hour before meals, introducing them to uh, different types of food, suddenly all their food was being polished off the plate. So they created the Langham Court sausage. So they got the local butcher to come in and give, uh, demonstrate how they made sausages. They make their own pork pasties. They don't buy anything from break. You know, you can do. It costs an awful lot of money to buy pre-prepared. If you can get a cook to do it for you, it costs you less. 
you just got the wages of the cook. Their own pasties, I can tell you, fantastic, I tried them. Blackberry and pepper fruit leather. Who on earth buys blackberry and pepper fruit leather? But look at these lovely desserts. They're all little tidbits they have before the food so that all the residents now always come to the food club and they encourage and so all the team like to get involved. That's what I call innovative, it's what I call service, it's doing things differently. So what I want you to do is think about if you want people to talk about you in a positive fashion, I want you to be mad, not sad. Be magnificent and dazzling. Don't be satisfactory and dull like so many businesses are. Find a way of actually getting people to say, wow, they're different. If you want people to talk about you, for goodness sake, give them something to talk about. Because if you're just average like so many, nobody's going to talk about you. It's just another care home. It's so easy to give a wow. Get a TNT that people are going to talk about. So be mad, not sad. I give, away, give cards that challenge you. It all depends on your team. Trip, my trip to Barcelona gave me loads of pictures. So Tapa Tapa restaurant, I come down from the Olympic Village on the wire, um, and the cabin on the wire, and I see this lovely uh, uh, restaurant on the corner, a lovely bar. They spend a fortune on their marketing. R around the corner, rich man's yacht, Roman Abramovich's yacht. Who do we have greeting? Miserable mackerel. Staring us at the table. Why are you taking a picture of me? I said, because you're beautiful. That didn't even get a smile. And she's there, the only time she smiled when her friend came round the corner. Why on earth do we spend so much money on marketing and we've got teams like that? We've got to shoot them. Shoot them legally, find out the lawyer how to do it properly, but get rid of them because they're sabotaging your success by having people who don't care about creating the right pressure. So you've got to make sure you've got the team attitude. I went to um, Tallinn in Estonia and they've got the same problem. Look at this, the trouble they take to do their flowers. And this could be an example in your own home. And you see, just around the corner, there's a lady there, and I thought, I'm at wonder. So I went a bit closer, changed my angle, and looked at the picture. Yeah? Yeah, what? What sort of attitude? You know, she's trying to get me to sell flowers. Am I gonna buy from somebody like that? Am I hell? That's what so many of our team are like, because they're focused on being carers, or what they feel carers are about. They don't realize they're also your part of your ambassador, uh, your ambassadorial team. So have you got miserable mackerels like that that are sabotaging your attempts to be successful when you've got all this horrible bureaucracy being imposed on you that's costing you so much to implement? I know Andrea is coming along, so I've got to be a bit careful. Testimonials. Get your Google reviews. Get five-star Google reviews and make sure that you've got people, especially on video, talking about you. Get those video clips, get an iPad, it does not have to be professional. Get an iPad, get them talking to you while they're still. Don't give these dead testimonials where people are dead. Thank you for looking after auntie. You know, she, we really appreciate it. Get live testimonials, people who are still there. People believe what other people, they believe, especially the users talking about it, rather than somebody else, um, you writing them, all this lovely stuff in some glossy magazine. Nobody believes it. You're the only people who look at it. Nobody else does. So spend your money properly and make sure you advertise on the things that matter, on your TNTs, on getting your first impressions and getting your testimonials right. But let me draw this to a close because in our short time we've got together, the most important thing that you've got to do, I went to Canada, to Calgary, where they have the world famous Rodeo, Sheraton Suites in Calgary, and uh, I was picked up from the hotel, they sent a taxi, I came into the reception, it was halfway to the back, and they looked up at me, it was a very short reception, and they said, Mr. Ogilvy, I said, yes, how do you know it's me? We've been expecting you. So in they, uh, in they come, and I so go, not like Razaria Resort, but the lady, the receptionist, starts taking my details, and she walks me to my room. I go to my room, and there is a, a cowboy boot made out of chocolate, full of grapes. I said, is that real chocolate? I said, yeah. What, for me to eat? I said, yeah. I said, look, I'll come back, unpack, I'll come back in half an hour, I'll tell you about our hotel facilities, and I'll tell you about our uh, um, facilities in Calgary. So I tried the chocolate like you would do. Two minutes later, I was down to the soul. What a pig. I couldn't believe. I was so embarrassed. Yeah. But it was delicious. You know, once you start, it's one of those chocolates, once you started eating, you couldn't stop it. I went and found her because I wasn't going to see, let her see what a pig I'd been. I was so embarrassed I came back that evening. My boot had gone, but it had been replaced by a chocolate hat. 
made out to beautiful chocolate overflowing with chocolate cover, covered strawberries. And my mat by my bed had been changed because I had a wee willy winky mat. And I had a little herbal tea and a chocolate, well that's quite common, and a little message on my pillow. I've, just, I've done up your room. If there's anything else I can do to help you sleep better tonight, just call me Wendy. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. But it was tempting. I appreciated the fact she took the trouble to give me a telephone number to call if I wasn't sleeping well. So, uh, you know, Premier Inn don't give me a personal number when they give me my sleep guarantee. But I talk about these people all around the world about the things that matter. And so I just want you to think about what you can do to change it. Then Original, our friend Original. He comes back and he says, I want you to tell me if you are ready to test this experience. Not when, it's not if, but when. So I said, look, I'm playing golf next day, the day after. So day seven, he comes along and he finds me in the hotel next door. So he gets out his uh, knife out of its scabbard, wooden scabbard, gets out the uh, pineapple, holds it by the spiky bits, and starts peeling it like an apple. The notches in the pineapple, he carves out, and then with a flourish, gets a plastic bag as uh, he holds it so he doesn't hold the flesh, takes off the spiky bits, puts it in the bag, sits, cuts, it, cuts it in six, and then he sat down. Much applause as ever he's there. He's been chanting away like a poet. Hey, pineapples are great for your chest. They help you to digest. Naff poetry like that. Doesn't matter. He was creating fun. Everybody loved it. He was enjoying it, and everybody was watching there. And I suddenly thought, I haven't asked the price. Uh-oh, I haven't asked the price. So he sat down. I said, how much do you want, original? He said, Mike, I've come to think of you as a friend. Shall we call it 100? I said, original. I've come to think of you as a friend. Shall we call it 20? Handing over a $20 note. He shakes my hand with a glint in his eye, takes a $20 note, says, Mike, it's been great doing business with you. And I thought, have I been had? How much money does he make? How much did that pineapple cost him, even if it was his own in the first place? And he sold it for $20. I said to him, does anybody ever pay you $200? Yeah. Well, Americans? Yeah. Brits? No. I said, you're far too tight. I want to share this story with you because Original didn't sell me anything. He invited me to buy. He qualified how long I was going to be there. He made sure he had the time. So I'm going to now think about what you could do. Can you give an experience that everybody will talk about around the world? about you like I do about original. Because whatever you do, whatever your TNT is, it's the experience of dealing with you that really matters. I hope in that short run through, I've given you um, a thought process that you can follow to find the TNTs in your business and be mad, not sad, getting, creating a wow. Thank you very much for being part of the audience.